Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of September, where we are checking all the news around 3ds Max. During September, the 3ds Max team has been updating USD import and export independently from the main 3ds Max branch. It's something that you can download totally for free to get a better interoperability with 3ds Max. Now we get USD 0.5, that adds a lot of core functionality to the USD importer and exporter. It now supports 3ds Max morphers and a skin to the equivalent on USD, that is blend shapes. And for the first time, we have Material X support in 3ds Max. This will actually open the door to a way better communication with other apps and renderers available. There's as well a lot of improvements on a speed performance when you are importing USDs or where, while you are exporting them. There's as well a lot of improvements on the SDK to allow for third-party developers to add or change upon the built-in features. You can check all these new features in the change log in the Autodesk site, and Cheng Soeun created a very complete explanation that explains what is possible now with Material X that you need to check it out. And a lot of these short videos are created from Cheng Su, where he's uh, displaying all these new features that we have with USD and 3ds Max. TRB released MaxFlow. It's a new based scene data management for 3ds Max. As you can see on the video, it has a very clean UI and it extends the possibilities that you have in 3ds Max. Supports multiple renderers like Bitray and Corona, and it has a batch rendering to save multiple renderers, cameras, and configs from the same file. It's compatible with 3ds Max 2022 to Max 2024. You have a 30 day trial available to try it out before buying it, and if you want to buy it, it's $62. Mason shared for free a 3ds Max script called String Light Generator. It's very simple, just pick a line and we'll create a very detailed string light where you can adjust multiple elements like the light uh, bulb and wire thickness, the twisting and other elements. It's available in Gumroad. Tyson has been teasing some new options on a new Typeflow version that one, it's already released and some they will come very soon. We have a new relative to travel distance to fix a very common problem when rotating based on travel directions. Now you can see it's way more smooth. And then we have a new way to work in compounds when you work with physics shapes to create very accurate collisions only when they are needed on a concave object. So basically it evaluates each object and if it's uh, concave, it will decompose it in multiple elements to create a good shape for the collisions. And we get more options on the push modifier that allows to display the elements of an object in a very effective way. It's, uh, it's kind of like an explode view in Houdini. All this is on the Typeflow Facebook group. On my Patreon, I did a tutorial covering paper partnering, uh, how it disintegrates with some tips and tricks, and we did all that in Typeflow, and I think that we had a lot of fun on this one. And also we did a fluid simulation in 3ds Max without any plugin using fluids in Max to create a logo reveal. Check my Patreon if you want to see some cool stuff with Typeflow or 3ds Max. And let's start with our favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGBs. The guys from ILM released a behind the scenes for the Mandalorian Season 3, as usual, outstanding work. Uh, with 3ds Max being used for a big part of the environment that you can see here. Amazing stuff, like always. Arur Munoz teased us with a very cool stylized animation done for the studio Moon Studio. The model is done by Christian Lagrange and it's a very cool stuff. And we have Hobby Day that as usual he keeps doing very cool Star Wars inspired animations. This one has been rendered in a RTX 4090, rendered in 3ds Max 2024.1, V-Ray 6 GPU, taking around 7 minutes per frame. All the post work has been done in After Effects. We have as well as Jean Ri that shared this very cool animation done for Nice Studios. 
Amazing and complete shot done mostly with 3 ds Max, V-Ray, Type Flow, and other tools involved like a Speed Tree and Nuke. It's quite outstanding that all the VFX work has been done in 10 days, and yeah, one more time showcasing what uh, one good artist can do in, with 3 ds Max. And we have Make, that they are creating a new series in YouTube that it's called Brave Hearts. The first episode is already available, 100% done in 3 ds Max, rendered in V-Ray and Type Flow. Super cool aesthetic and with the top quality that we are used from this studio. And by the way, if you are looking for work, Make is looking for freelancers and as you can see, looking especially for 3 ds Max users. So if you are around looking for a job, give it a try, uh, amazing studio. We have a very cool monster animation by AJ Jefferies. He used Ornatrix for the fur and V-Ray for rendering. Very funny and nice stuff. Alex Gwen showcased a very cool script that he wrote in MaxScript and Python to track a hand gesture from a single video and transferring it into a rig inside 3 ds Max directly. Bricktop showcased a very refined animation done for Shell, showcasing how important hydrogen will be on the theater very clean renders, uh, very cool. It's rendered in Corona, by the way, and yeah, nice animations. And we have Antonio Perez that did a very cool model and animation for a uh, goldfish. The details are done in ZBrush and uh, he rendered this with FStorm. Also following same also, with the same tools, he created this very impressive crocodile that I think that it's very, very, very cool. Alexander Smirnov directed and created all the VFX for this short movie called Decadence. Very realistic architectural shots with awesome lighting and a lot of trees on in a speed tree. He used 3ds Max for modeling, set dressing, effects and rendered everything all together in Corona. I love the look and very nice work. And we changed totally the style. We have the work by Li Jiulong from C from Sichuan, China, that create this very cool mushroom house with a very interesting breakdown. Model in 3ds Max, detailed in ZBrush, painted in Substance 3D Painter, and finally ported to Unreal Engine to create this amazing real-time environment. Uh, loving it, it's very cool to see all these type of different styles that you can achieve in 3D. And we get some video games. Robin Andre shared the word that he did for the trailer for the game Armor Core 6 that I think was released uh, last month. It's called Fires of Rubicon at Unity Image. He was responsible for the environment modeling, assembly, shading, lighting, and compositing using V-Ray, Gaia, Forest Pack, and Nuke for compositing. Lost Village is an environment practice from William Dupkanik. He used 3ds Max, V-Ray, Gaia, and Nuke. Mohamed Hejer shared a very cool and stylized animation in Typeflow group in Facebook, obviously with a lot of Typeflow in it, to scatter and to create uh, some of the effects. And Mohamed Hejer showcased the power of CUDA cloth in Typeflow with a very simple setup with remarkable results. Uh, as always, Typeflow with CUDA creates very nice stuff with cloth and all types of ropes. Andres Merlo shared a fan-made animation for Star Wars. He did all the aspects of this shot. There's a lot of Typeflow that he used for all these crowds that he created that they are fighting all types of lasers, rendered in V-Ray and comp in Nuke. Uh, you can as well see a making of that he, he put available. And yeah, this month there are so many cool stuff done in 3ds Max, uh, one more.
and even another one, super cool, from a Scott Buchanan that did this impressive house under an intense rainstorm using Typeflow, Phoenix, and render uh, using V-Ray. Very short, but very, very, very cool. And we have the hero himself, the master, the legend, Sir Marek Denko. I think that if you have been a long time with 3ds Max, you need to know the name of Marek Denko, that shared on a stack group in Facebook an amazing image full of detail. As all the time, all what he does, it has this incredible detail, uh, as usual, 3ds Max and rendered it in V-Ray. Very happy to see, again, Marek Denko was a while, uh, but yeah, always top quality stuff. And if you want to learn more, this month we had Paul Neal with a very cool tutorial covering how to create a fence using the ring modifier with some extra tips and tricks. Always very cool to see the tutorials from Paul because you can always learn something. And we have Autodesk 3ds Max learning channel that was not publishing lately, but this month we get a new complete tutorial covering color management in 3ds Max 2024.1. And yeah, if you are you want to know more about color management in 3ds Max, uh, that's that's the one to check out. And that's it for this month. Thank you so much. Remember, I love when I get comments. Uh, give a like, share with your friends, subscribe if you are not subscribed. And thanks a lot to all my Patreons that makes these videos possible. Thank you, guys, and see you soon. Bye.